Sunda, you, you were, if I, if I look what, what has happened in technology over the last, uh, I would even say 30 years, there was one big uh, breakthrough. It was actually when um, AlphaGo um, uh, was beating uh, Lee Zedol. I, I think we haven't really understood yet the implications of uh, this breakthrough. And now your company, uh, Google, is again at the forefront of another um, uh, revolution, which may have even more uh, consequences, positive or negative one. It's actually uh, the, the, um, what you just announced in uh, quantum computing, the breakthrough. And I, I have to say, um, it's very difficult to understand. I just know uh, it could have a tremendous implications. Can you explain what we can expect from quantum computing? And you are now the leader. You, you have made the big breakthrough. Now, it's an extraordinarily important milestone. You know, last year we achieved something, what's, what's known in the field as quantum supremacy. Uh, it is when you can take quantum computers and they can do something which classical computers cannot. Um, and, uh, and, you know, I like the way you characterized it. It's as inspiring a milestone as the deep blue moment or AlphaGo uh, playing with Lace et al. To me, you know, nature at a fundamental level uh, works in a quantum way. You know, at a subatomic level, things can exist in many different states at the same time. Classical computers work in ones and zeros. So we know that's an imperfect way uh, to simulate nature. Nature works differently. So what's exciting about quantum computing and why we are so excited about the possibilities is it'll allow us to understand the world in a deeper way. We can simulate nature better. So that means simulating molecular structures. So maybe we can discover better drugs. Mm -hmm. Understanding climate in a deeper way so that we can predict weather patterns and tackle climate change. We can design better batteries. Nitrogen fixation, which is the process by which we make the world's fertilizers, accounts for 2% of carbon emissions. And the process hasn't changed in a long time because it's very complicated. Quantum computers one day allows us the hope that we can make that process more efficient. Yeah. So it's very profound. We've all been dealing in technology with the end of Moore's law. Uh, you know, it's re really revolutionized the past 40 years, but it's leveled off. So when I look at the future and say, how do we drive improvements? Quantum would be one of the tools in our arsenal uh, by which we can keep something like Moore's law continuing to evolve. So the potential is huge, and you know we'll have challenges. Yeah. You know, in a five to ten year time frame, quantum computing will break encryption as we know it today. But you know we can we can work around it. We need to do quantum encryption. Uh, so there are challenges, as always, with any evolving technology. But I think the combination of AI and quantum will help us tackle some of the biggest problems we see. And you add also to a certain extent genetics. I mean, I think uh, quantum computing and biology will one of the uh, biggest potential. will have a great potential, yeah. positive and negative one. Uh, the positive one, as you're saying rightly, is uh, you know to simulate molecules, protein folding, etc. To it's yeah. very very complex today. We cannot do it with classical computers. So with quantum computers, yeah. we can. Yeah. Uh, but we have to be clear-eyed about, uh, you know, all these powerful technologies. And, uh, you know, this is why, you know, I think we need to be deliberate and regulate uh, uh, technologies like AI and as a society needs yeah. to need to engage on it. 